The Traveller, a poem by Frank. There is an old man who lives down my street, who leads a very drab and boring existence. He'll sit on his doorstep all the live long day, watching all the passers-by, for instance. He seldom speaks, and never has any visitors, and with me he just exchanges daily pleasantries, when he's out and about in his garden, tending to his plants or even pruning his trees. Last week I plucked up the courage to ask him to talk to me about his experiences, his life. Curiosity had finally got the better of me. I didn't even know if he'd ever have a wife. Oh my, you're a nosy one, was his initial reply. But then I noticed his eyes glazing over fast. His lips formed a faintly ironic little smile. He was travelling backwards into his past. Son, I've lived long enough for two people. For I am over a hundred years old. This happens when you outlive those you know and love, the curse of a long life, if truth be told. I was shocked and saddened by his frankness, and urged him to tell me about the places he'd seen, people he'd known, things he'd done. His expression became sunny, a little younger, and clean. I've seen the sun rise over Tokyo, in the land of the rising sun. I crossed the jungles of Sumatra, stopped in Bangkok just for fun. I watched sharks feeding off Bondi Beach, swam in the Dead Sea, straggled in the wastes of Antarctica, and sunbathed in, on Waikiki. I once hunted lions in Africa, and once lived on board a whaler, hunting orcas off Newfoundland, though I was never a good sailor. In New York I saw them erecting the Empire State Building, watched cricket in England, and even understood fielding. I travelled the cattle trails of America, and to Angel Falls in Venezuela. I once, while in South Africa, met and spoke to Nelson Mandela. I visited Ayers Rock in Australia, standing there like a big red dome. When I started to get old, I packed up and came back home. His face became sad, his lips formed a grimace, as a tear rolled slowly down his rugged cheek. I felt guilty for pressing him so much. Me and my stupid curiosity caused him pain. He looked so old, so frail and so weak. But then his expression lightened again, and he continued to speak. When I got back here, there was no one I knew left alive. The whole place had become much busier, almost like a beehive. So I just sit and watch as the world goes by, but I never forget the experiences I had under a different sky.